It has been three years since I made a video about how expensive it is to live in Charleston. And to say things have changed would be the understatement of the year. So today we're gonna to talk about exactly how much more expensive it has gotten to live here. Welcome back everybody. If you are new here, I'm Bill and I make videos like this for people like you to help you make better decisions when moving to, from, or around the greater Charleston area. So if you're into that sort of thing, go ahead and click that subscribe button. And after this video, check out all the other videos that I have because they're sure to help you make a better decision. And if you are looking to buy a house, I'm also a full-time real estate agent. I've got all my contact information below. There's even a link where you can jump right on my calendar and schedule a call with me. So let's get right into this. Now, the website I like to use when it comes to housing costs and comparing different areas is called bestplaces.net. It's fantastic. They use a scale where 100 is the national average. And if you are above 100, then you are above average. And if you are below 100, can you guess what you are? You are below average. So we are gonna be using that to talk about all different categories about here in Charleston and a little bit of the state in general. So to start off, the cost of living in South Carolina as a state is an 89 out of 100. That means we are below average to live in the state we're about the 15th cheapest state to live in. Now, when we go into the metro area and the counties, the Charleston metro area is the most expensive city in South Carolina, and Charleston County is the most expensive county in South Carolina. But regardless of that, people are continuing to flock here and move here. So why is it? Let's break all of this down and talk about exactly how expensive it is if you were to make the decision to move to Charleston. So when looking at just the city of Charleston, the overall cost of living is 111.5, putting it not really that much above the national average, but that's just the city. Um, it didn't have anything for if we included all of the areas of Charleston County, Dorchester County, and Berkeley County that make up the greater Charleston area. But if I were a betting man, I would actually lower that to about, I would say like a 104, 105, let's call it like a, a 104.6. So the first category we're gonna talk about is the one that we can break down into all the different areas and that is housing or home prices in general. And overall, housing in South Carolina is 76.6. That is well below the national average on home prices. Now part of this plays into the fact that there aren't a lot of really big cities within South Carolina. There's a lot of rural areas, so that's gonna keep that number down. But when we get into Charleston, you're gonna see these numbers are drastically higher. And right here in the city of Charleston, that housing number is 132.5, with the median home price within the city at just under $600,000. And that is not even the highest area around here just across the bridge in Mount Pleasant, that number jumps to 193.1. It is nearly double the average housing cost in Mount Pleasant than it is in the United States. And that average housing, that median housing cost right now is around 950,000. If you thought that was high, let's look at the beaches. Now of the three main beaches, Folly, Isle of Palms, Sullivan's Island, Folly Beach has a 305.3, Isle of Palms, is a 349.9, and Sullivan's Island tops us off at 728.7, with a median home price of around three million. So yeah, housing is extremely expensive, but it doesn't have to be. I want, let's, let's take a trip north into some other areas where you can be below that national average and two of the most popular are gonna be Somerville and Goose Creek. Somerville's sitting at an index of 94 with a median home price just around 400,000, and Goose Creek sitting at an 80 with a median home price of 320,000. Now this is just taking into account the home prices and nothing to do with property taxes. And the taxes here can kind of offset the higher prices as South Carolina has the fifth lowest effective tax rate 
in the country. So if it's your primary residence, the effective tax rate here in the state is around 0.56%, but it fluctuates from county to county. So here in Charleston County, the effective rate is 0.5. In Berkeley County, it's 0.51. And in Dorchester County, can you guess? It is 0.6. Seven. I mention property taxes quite often in my videos because, not because I enjoy it and really like talking about taxes, but because of the way our property taxes work, it's unlike anywhere else. So that 0.5 to 0.67 around here effective tax rate is only for your primary residence. Now, if you're buying a non-primary residence, so a vacation home or an investment, those property taxes are going to roughly triple on you because your, your home is gonna be assessed at a different rate and your primary residence is exempt from school operating taxes. So if you're looking for a vacation home or an investment property, be sure to take those taxes and triple them. All right, so next up, we have one of my favorite things, and that's food. Groceries are at a 105.6, so it's slightly above average to head to the grocery store and get what you need. If you want to go out to eat, we don't have a number just for restaurants, but for all of goods and services, restaurants, retail, entertainment, a number is at a 93.7. But if we could pull just restaurants out of there, I'm sure it would be higher than the groceries, especially here in Charleston County, because our sales tax is, here we go, taxes again, my favorite thing, our sales tax is 9%. However, there is also a 2% hospitality tax for any prepared food or drinks. So if you're going out to eat, you can expect to tack on 11% on top of your bill and then your tip. So you might as well just go to the grocery store and pay slightly above average for your eggs. Next on the list is healthcare and we're below average, not by much, at a 98.9 .9 here in Charleston. Um, this is probably due to the fact that we do have the Medical University of South Carolina and a few other hospitals. So we do have a lot of doctors around here and a lot of access to healthcare, which probably keeps that price a little bit lower. Our next category is utilities. So in the summer, it's hot. In the winter, it gets a little bit cold. So what does it cost to heat and cool your home? Well, we are sitting at a 101.6, so slightly above average, not terribly expensive to heat and cool your home. Just depends on where you wanna keep it, if you live in a terrarium or you wanna freeze like an icicle. Or if you're like me and you need to charge an electric vehicle at home, it's not gonna be terribly expensive. And that rolls us into our next topic of transportation, where we sit at a 94 Point one. And our gas prices in South Carolina are actually the fifth cheapest in the country. So I guess since gas is below average and utilities are above average, I should have just kept my gas car and not bought that electric car. So what do you think? Are you still considering a move to Charleston? Let me know. Click the link down below to jump on my calendar. Give me a call, text, shoot me an email. And while you're at it, subscribe, watch all my other videos. I got some videos right here that I really think you'll like. So I'll check you out on that video or just give me a call and let's chat. Have a good one. I'll see you on the next video.